and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're well today, grand and all's when you world. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, today, people of tube, we are going to be talking about guitar setups. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit to people that might not know anything about guitar setups, talking about like things like grub screws, intonation, stuff like that. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about, well, I'm going to start with what I think is the most important part of guitar setups, which is learn to do it yourself. Uh, I, it might seem a quite daunting task to some. Uh, it did to me when I first decided to, I was, like, was going to do, I'm going to do my own guitars. I'm not leaving this to somebody else anymore. But it really pays off and it really does pay off in the fact of like, you know, you don't have to, it's just, it's just better to learn to do it yourself. It really is. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so that, that, that to me is like the main thing. Another, another really important fact that you have to think about when you set up your guitars is there isn't one setup that does it for everybody. Everyone will want their guitars set up differently. You know, what works for one person will not work for the other. We're all individual. We all play differently. You know, one person might like a really high action um, because of whatever reason. Somebody might like a really low action. Someone might like a medium action. Somebody might like strings in a different way. But, you know, whatever. You know, it's... And again, this 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 is this comes back to kind of point one of of learning to do it yourself is if you experiment with your guitar, you can't break it. Don't worry, you know it'll take a lot to break a guitar. Um, just messing around with grub screws and stuff like that. But if you're if you're setting up your own guitar, you will very quickly find what you like and don't like, and it also gives you the confidence too. Uh, find what you like and don't like instead of having somebody do it for you and say that's that's a good setup so to say so um they're still in my pocket um so bear that in mind people tube again it's like anything when it comes down to music guitars amps pedals you are the most important factor what do you want the guitar to feel like what do you want it to play like you know, uh, obviously guitars will have limitations, and I'll talk about that in a sec, because I'm going to use Mr. Red here as an example. So, <clears throat> but again, it really is important to find what you want out of your guitar. And the only way that's going to happen, really, is by you messing around with this thing and finding where you like the strings, what kind of string gauge you like, you know, heavy, light, medium light, he extra light, you know, whatever. Um, pick up heights. Again, down to you, you know, it, it, it's it's all subjective. It's all subjective. There isn't, there, there are kind of like, you know, bit, set your guitar to this and it will feel good. Yeah, there are those, but it's only good. You can get it way better if you delve into it and do it yourself and find out what you like instead of what somebody's telling you is right. So... Let's get going, shall we? So, um, if you've never set up a guitar before in your life, um, this this part of this video is going to be aimed at you. So, do not be afraid of it. Do not be like, oh my god, what if I ruin it? You won't ruin it. A anything you do to a guitar can be put back. You know, anything you do can be put back. So, we're going to start at the bridge here. So... At the bridge, you have these things called saddles. So again, again, I know a lot of you will know this, but people who are just getting into setups or who have just got their first guitar, this is kind of aimed towards you. So at down the bottom here, you have a thing called these things called saddles, um, and invariably you'll have six of them. On certain Telecasters, you'll have three of them. Uh, but on a you know on a standard guitar, you'll have you'll have six individual saddles. Even on things like Les Pauls and, and SGs and stuff like that, you'll have six individual saddles. Telecasters are really where it kind of differs, and you have two strings on one saddle. But uh, we'll talk about that in another video. I'll come back and talk about Telecasters at a later date. We're just going to focus on you know the most common six individual saddles, uh, and that's where your string goes over. And basically, this is kind of like um, the most important part, really. Um, I will talk about truss rod in a minute. And uh, basically what a truss rod is, if you don't know what a truss rod is, the truss rod is a big steel bar that lives uh, in the wood, in under the fretboard of your guitar neck uh, to keep the thing straight or slightly curved up. Uh, and I'll talk about a bit more about that in a sec. But let's start here at saddles. So saddle up, man! Um, in the saddles, invariably... On a, like a Strat style, Fender style guitar, you'll have things called grub screws. There's these tiny little screws 
that you can move with an Allen key. And that basically moves the string up and down. You have two on the left and right of the saddle and the string goes through the middle. You have two that you can raise or lower. And that's basically that. Uh, there's a screw at the back here as well. And this is for intonation. Now, intonation, if you've never heard that, uh, about that, intonation is basically where you um, the guitar plays in tune with itself. So if I play like an E major chord here, So you can hear that's in tune. <clears throat> that wants to then coincide with an E major chord down here. It wants to sound the same. Which it does. Yay. Um, thank gravy. Um, but intonation is, again, is very easy to do. What you need to do is get yourself a really good tuner. And what you do is you play the harmonic of the 12th fret. And that should be equal to the note on the 12th fret. Like that. Um, and a tuner can tell you whether it's right or if it's wrong. And you basically move, you screw this screw in or back it out to get it in tune. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go co too heavily intonation because I kind of want to do a whole video on the intonation itself. Uh, because I feel like, you know, that is kind of like uh, wants to be approached itself. This is just mainly about string height and getting the guitar to play how you want. You know, I'm going to set this guitar up today because I've reached. I restrung Mr. Red last night, and I purposely messed with it. Um, I've I've altered the I've altered the string heights. I've you know I, I've I've messed with the guitar. I've messed with the pickup heights for this video, basically, so I can show you what I'm doing to get it back to how I want. But the main thing you want to be focusing on if you're a beginner is forget the intonation for now. Not it, invariably it'll be in anyway. Don't worry about the trust rod for now. I will talk about that later on, but don't worry about the short rod. Invariably, that'll be okay as well. The main thing you want to be focusing on is the saddles and the string height and the angles of your strings down here. So, what I suggest you do is get your Allen key. Most guitars come with an Allen key. If not, you can go and buy these things. They're all over the place. Any kind of hardware store will have them. Um, and just basically start messing around with string heights. So, get your tuner on your red stock or, or if you've got a pedal tuner or whatever. And literally... Just start playing around. Uh, for the longest time, uh, I've recently changed actually, and maybe the last like two years, I've recently changed myself. And again, this is something that happened as well, people with Jubies. Your tastes will change from one month to another, a year to another, they will change. Like, you know, how you have your guitar set up now might not be like how you want it set up in a year's time or a month's time or even a week's time. Things will change, so bear that in mind. Um, for the longest time, I had my guitar set up in a kind of a weird fashion. Uh, I had my E string there, low E string, A string, and then the D string was here. So they kind of like went up like at an angle like that. And then my G string was above the D. My B string was above the G slightly, very, very, uh, like very sm small. And then the high E string was above the B. So basically my strings kind of had an incline like that. And the high E was right at the top and the low E was at the bottom. I've recently, ch in the last two years or so, I've, I've changed that to being a lot more radiused. Uh, and again, this is what happens. You know, what, what, you, what you did like uh, two, three years ago or even longer than that, whatever, it will change because we're humans. We, you know, things have to change. Yeah, we, 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 we evolve. And as we evolve, our guitars will evolve. You know, the way they sell will, will evolve. So uh, bear that in mind. And again, the thing is, if you've learned to set up your own guitars, you'll know when this happens because you'll be like, I don't really like that anymore. And then you can go back to experimentation mode, which is what I did, messing around with um, saddle height and, and all that kind of thing and pickup height. Um, and all of a sudden you you find where you, know, you, you want it again and you go, oh, that's different to how I used to have it. So now my setups on all my guitars are more radius to the fretboard. So basically what they do is, the, uh, the G string and the D string are now the highest on the board. So they're there. The B string is there. High E string is there. A string is there. Low E string is there. So they kind of go in the radius. And because a lot of my guitars have um, the uh, old 7 and whatever vintage radius on the fretboards, you know, um, I like that more right now. Will I go back to my mad, weird, slanty setting? Probably at some point. Uh, but at this point in time, this is where I am. And I think that's really important, is know where you are. 
And again, this comes down to learning to do it all yourself. You know, the, the more you do it yourself, the more you'll understand uh, where you are with the guitar. That wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it did. Uh, he's a poet and he didn't quite understand it. Anyway, um, but yeah, it really is important just to d dive into the guitar and just mess around, especially with the saddles. You know, the saddles are really important. The truss rod's important as well, but invariably once a truss rod's set, you never really have to tweak it. You know, you really don't. Um, I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I've messed with truss rods, really. Uh, I kind of had to alter Mr. Red's truss rods slightly, but in all fairness, that was my own stupid neurosis. And I thought, I need to change it. And invariably, I didn't. And I just put it back to where it was originally. So, Trust rods, you don't really need to alter. You know, once they're set, they're set. Intonation, once it's set, it's set as well. But again, I will talk about intonation in another video. I'll try and get another video done uh, at some point about intonation. And show you what I mean. I'll purposely mess up the intonation on one of my guitars. And show you, uh, like, you know, in depth, that kind of thing. I have shown it in videos, but not like a dedicated video. So, so yeah. So we'll talk about that at a later date. Anyway, so um, Alan Keys, mess around with the uh, saddles as much as you can. Just play around. Find what you like to feel of. Go string by string by string. Okay, and just like, uh, and you'll find what setup you like. I mean, I, I've played some people's guitars where people like um, the G string higher than the B string. Or the B string higher than the G string, or whatever. I, I, you know, a lot of people who do this themselves will invariably kind of like you know find their own way of the way they like their guitar to feel, and you will find the same thing. But don't be afraid of it. You won't break anything. You know, you'll go a long way to break these things. Um, you know, you really will. So just be aware of that. You'll be you'll be fine. Just have fun with it and experiment, and just spend some time with it. Uh, another thing to note as well is when you're altering the string height of the guitar, you don't want to do it in this orientation. It, you want to do it as if you're playing the guitar. So it wants to be this orientation. Yeah, but as you're altering the string height, you want to be doing it here. The reason for that is when the guitar's laid like this, on a neck rest or just laid down, uh, things are different. You know, it, it's laterally, this. it's just different. I can't think of the exact words because I'm not clever enough, people of the tube. But basically, when the guitar is laying this way, uh, even without a neck rest, it's different to when you pick it up. So uh, when you're setting up your guitars, it's really important to have them in a playing position, just sat down like this, or stood up. I invariably do mine stood up because uh, I can I can see the strings better. Okay, so. But just mess around, mess around. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about now is pickup heights. Now, pickup height is really, 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 really important, I think, to what you want to do. Uh, you never want your pickups to be almost, well, to be touching the strings. You know, they, they never want to be too high. But me, personally, I like my uh, pickups really, really low. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, I like to be able to have the cleanest... Uh, kind of sound from my amp and my guitar to lay pedals on because I get all my sound from a pedal uh, and not from my amp I like to have my pick my pickups really low so they're as clean as a whistle invariably so but again some people like them a little bit higher some people might, might even like them lower than I have them but one thing to be aware of, and this is a thing I call stratitis, and this isn't just it just it doesn't occur just to strats but uh, I just call it that because it's where I experienced it first. Um, Stratitis is basically a thing is where your pickup's so too close to the pick, uh, the string, it's actually pulling it out of tune. And what invariably you get is... I, I can't got it on this guitar, but uh, obviously. But um, this guitar is just heaven. Anyway, uh, enough about that. It's <laughs> like gushing over Mr. Red, people who be aware. But... Um, Strut artist is where you fret a note, you'll have an overtone, so it'll give you kind of like, almost like two notes, it'll, it'll almost sound like that, it'll sound horrible, and that's a good sign that your pickup is too high, and you'll have to wind it down. And again, this is something to experiment with. Do not be worried about messing with pickup heights, it's not going to alter anything, all it's going to do is just make the guitar more 
personal to you. You'll find where you want the pickup. But again, be aware of Stratitis, even though it, a very, it happens to every guitar. Les Pauls, you name it. Um, just be aware that if your pickup is too close to your string, it will pull it out of tune and it will just sound awful. And you won't be able to play anything in tune. It'll just pull it out and it just won't very good. Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, another, uh, another thing to be aware of, though, when you're adjusting your pickups is be aware that the threads on the pickups have a, a low point and they can fall off. If you're screwing it, screwing it down, I want it lower, want it lower, and then it goes king and falls off its screw, then basically you've got to take the guitar apart and reattach it. Again, don't be afraid of doing that, though. If, if, you're, if your pickup falls into the guitar, take the strings off and look at the guitar and just do it. And just do it nice and slow and methodical. Don't rush into it and don't get beaten down by it. You know, it's very... Nothing on the guitar is hard to do, really. You know, it just takes you some time to learn and that's the most important part. It's just the slower you go, the, 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 the quicker you'll learn. It really, really well. But just bear that in mind. Be aware that these screws are infinite. You know, they will it will fall off again. I, I know a lot of you will know that, but I, I just wanted to mention it because uh, that's happened to me a few times in the past where I've gone D -d 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 -d. oh, and the pickup's fallen off the, uh, the the screw, and then I'm like, ah, got to take the whole thing out and reattach it. Anyway, so find where you like your pickups. You know, and this this has to be done for an amp. You have to plug in. You have to know exactly what you want and where you want it to be set. For me, like I say, I found out very early on I like my pickups really, really low. Apart from Telecasters. Now, Telecasters are a weird one for me. In fact, I like the pickups as close to the string as I can get it on the treble side and as low as I can get it on the bass side. I don't know why that is. I just really like the treble side really high and the bass side really low on a Telecaster. The Strat and a Les Paul. Uh, a Strat is not too dissimilar for me. I always have the treble side higher than the bass side. The bass side is always sunk. My pickups are always slanted on a Strat. Um, but again, uh, I, I, on a Telecaster, it's very drastic. If you if you look at my Telecaster, they're very drastic. Uh, on a Les Paul, I just like them flat. Uh, I find that's the best norm. Normally, the best way from that. Normally, the best sound for me is when I have a humbucker flat. I've tried all sorts of different angles with humbuckers. I've tried the Peter Green one, where it, like he literally sinks the bass end of the humbucker into the pickup ring and has the treble side really jacked up to the string. But I don't really like it. I, again, that's Peter Green's setup. That's not my setup, and as a result, it doesn't work for me. So bear that in mind. Okay. So again. What works for somebody else might not work for you. Always go by you. Again, like I say with everything, people of you, you are the most important part of this setup of anything. You know, how you, where you set your amp, where you set your pedals, where you set your string height, where you set your pickups, the way you have your guitar, the, the guitars you have, you know, everything is down to you. It's not for somebody else to, it's not to somebody else to come along and say you're doing it wrong. If it's right for you and it works for you, it's right regardless of what they think. Bear that in mind. Just always think about you. You know, just because something doesn't work for somebody else doesn't mean it's wrong for you. You know, keep keep you. Keep you. Do you. Okay, so uh, anyway. So yeah, so what we spoke about so far. So yeah, pickup height, important. But again, totally up to you. I like mine really low. Invariably what I do is I have the neck pickup on the base side about a millimeter high off the scratch plate so it's like a millimeter off the scratch plate the base the, the the treble side is like a millimeter and a half and then uh as i go back middle pickup is like um a millimeter and a half on the base side two millimeters on the uh on the treble side and then when we get back to the bridge pickup which is the highest pickup i have on on a, on a strat style guitar this is about two and a half mil and that's probably about three mil on the treble side so but again it isn't i don't measure it I just mess around with it until it sounds the way I want it to sound. And invariably, they're all slightly different. No, none of my guitars are set up the same. They're all different. Some uh, Mr. White's pickups are lower than Mr. Red's pickups here. Uh, my 62's pickups are lower than uh, Mr. Red. You know, all my guitars are set up differently because they're set up to themselves. And that brings me quite neatly into another point is no guitar is created the same. 
you can't have one setup on the on, on one guitar that you can then translate over to another guitar. Uh, I don't think that works. Uh, you can have approximations, but it'll never be the same. You know, uh, I have all my guitars set up at this point in time, like I say, with the radius kind of saddle thing. It, they're all kind of like, like this, instead of like they used to be like that. They're all like this now. But none of those radiuses are the same. Some... Uh, some have the G, B, and E strings closer together. Some have them more fur further apart. You know, it it's all down to again, put uh, guitar what the guitar wants and what feels right when you're playing the guitar. You know, uh, it's really really important. So, spoke about that. Uh, like I say I'm not going to talk about intonation at this point in time, but it's very simple. Like I say it's all basically the guitar has to be in tune with itself. So basically, this part of the, fr the guitar from the first fret to the 12th fret has to be in tune with the 12th fret to the wh however many frets you have on this side of the guitar. And you can check that invariably with the harmonics at the 12th fret. If they, if they all sound the same, job's good. Enough. And intonation is kind of a crapshoot anyway because it's never perfect. Intonation on all guitars is never perfect. We can only ever approximate it. We can't get it nailed on. You know, it's just as good as we can get it. And intonation can be squiffy anyway, just by the way we hold the guitar. So, um, that's that. So, spoke about saddles, pick up heights, uh, string height, again, is is just, a, a string angle is all personal preference. Uh, truss rod. Now, let's talk about truss rod. So, the truss rod is really important, obviously, to keep the neck on the guitar uh, straight and strong. You know, that, that big steel bar going through there to keep it kind of straight. Um... The problem with this is there's a lot of videos on YouTube I've seen of people setting up guitars saying the neck needs to be straight. It doesn't. Um, personally, I hate when the neck is straight. I've had it in the past with guitars where the truss rod's been tightened and the neck is straight. Like, it's literally like the A1, uh, even though the A1 ain't straight. But anyway, uh, it's like a Roman road. Let's put it that way. Um, and I don't like it. The guitar feels like this. And I hate that. So what I found very early on when I first started setting up guitars was I like quite a bit of relief in my neck. I, uh, I, I, not kind of drastic, so it's like a banana, but I do like my neck to kind of go up like that towards the first fret. So this is like, you know, where, you, where your pickups are, and I like it to kind of ramp up like that. So um, all my guitars are set up that way. I don't have any guitars, uh, with probably the exception of the Ibanez Gem, which is just flat anyway. You can, you know, there's not, there, there is still a bit of a, if I'm correct, there is still a bit of a uh, relief in that. But I have all my guitars doing this. Uh, I don't really have a, a guitar in my collection that's got a straight neck because I just don't like it. Um, the one thing I will say is the neck can be up bowed like this. The neck can be straight and the neck can go back bow like that. So basically the headstock starts to aim towards the floor. The back bow is what you don't want. That is where the truss rod definitely needs adjustment, in my personal opinion. You don't want back bow. Because what it does, basically, it humps the neck of the guitar to a point where you just can't play it. It just pings out and sounds naff. So, don't like it. Meh. Um, okay, so, bear that in mind. Back bow, bad. Straight. If you like it, go for it. Try it. Um, you know, if your neck's perfectly straight, but the guitar feels tense, maybe slacking off the truss rod. But again, you know... Don't be afraid of a truss rod. You're not going to kill it. It's not going to break. As long as you're like, you know, incrementally doing it. You know, you, you don't want to be kind of doing this on the truss rod. Why isn't it working? You know, uh, you don't want to be doing that. It's literally micro turns on a truss rod. You know, you never want to be um, kind of cranking on the thing. It isn't a, it isn't a thing. Yeah, the, the, the slightest movement of a tr uh, truss rod nut will have drastic effects on the, the way the neck is. So, like I say, I, I, I messed with this last night and put it back this morning because I'm an idiot and didn't didn't need to mess with it in the first place. Hence why I have my truss rod tool. But I put it back to where it was and that's the way it should have been. Um, one thing it did bring to the uh, uh, thing up though was uh, I needed to restring it. So that was okay. So I've restrung my guitar today. So, and I've like I say, I've messed about with the setup. So I'm now going to show you what I do to get the guitar to play how I want it. So at this point in time, people too, Mr. Red uh, feels weird. 
and it, the action's too low. You can almost hear it's kind of almost fretting out. And it, it's it's all right. It's a, it's an okay setup. It's kind of like you know it's quite nice. You know the strings are quite low, but it feels weird. It feels really really weird, and I don't like the fact it almost chokes out. I mean, it doesn't choke out on any fret, as you can hear, but it just feels a little bit stifled, uh, especially on the on the like the uh, the B and high E strings. And I don't really like the way that feels. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to alter the B and the high E strings. And I'm going to alter all the other strings accordingly. Also, the low E string feels really low. And it's almost kind of like, um, you know, there's, you know, it's too low. It, it, there is no life really in that string. So I'm going to bring up the B string first. I need to find a fret that's a bit dodgy. Yeah, I'll bend up the 12. Okay, what I'm going to do is, again, Allen key, I'm going to do like half a turn on each grub screw. And then retune and check it. Not bad. Uh, I think we can get it a little bit better, though. So, bring up, again, I'm... Um, I'm on, I'm on to micro turns now, though, people tube. Literally there, I didn't even, I, that wasn't even like 5% of a, of a turn. The first time I did it, I did it a half a turn, and then that time it was basically nothing. That feels absolutely wicked. And again, this is the thing I say, when you do it, when you so, when you do it yourself, you learn very quickly what you lo what you want and what you don't want, so you can find you, you find this out really quickly. So now I'm going to bring up a high E string because again it, it feels wonky donkey. So again, going for half turn on the grub screw. Um, that should be about spot on to be honest with you. Retune. Spot on. Absolutely spot, and I could I could tell as well by just looking at the string where the string was. I was like, "That's going to feel good." So now I've got the B string and the E string where I want them. Everything else is going to feel weird though because it's too low. Like I said, I've messed with the I've messed with the action on this thing. I've just lowered it to to bejeebus. It's rubbish. Uh, it's horrible. Um, I don't like it. I, I need to get this guitar back. So. Um, so yeah, so I can kind of see now, because I've been doing this for so long, I can kind of see where I want the strings to go. So moving on to the G string, we're going to do half turn on that. Get that cranked up. Uh, spot on. Now moving on to the D string. Again, it, half a turn each time. Invariably works. Yep, that's spot on. Okay, and then we're going to test it after this, obviously. So, get all the saddles. Uh, another thing I check for as well is to get the saddles all level. Like, I don't want my saddle to be kind of like this, you know, because invariably it, it's just not good for the string. Okay, so I just need to look in the light. Can't see properly. That looks about spot on. I'd say that A string wants to come a little bit higher. But again, it's so important to just learn to do it yourself, people too. It really is. It really... It'll save you money as well in the long run. And also save you uh, disappointment. Because uh, uh, the reason I started doing guitar setups myself was um, I sent a guitar. Well, I gave a guitar in. Oh my god. Perfect. That's it's alive again. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you the story of why I like I say what what made me want to set my own guitars. So my first Fender guitar is this one. I have it happily on hand. This is my first Fender guitar, and it's a it's a Korean Fender. I didn't make they only made these for one year, 
And um, when I got this guitar, basically the neck was a banana. I didn't know anything about setting up guitars when I got this thing. And I gave it to a local guitar shop to set up and uh, get playing right. It was with them for about two weeks. And I went back and got it, picked it up and got it home. And it just didn't play. Literally, every note was... It was like that. It just... Excuse me. It didn't... It did not play. Whoa, is that the first time I've done that on camera? It just didn't play. And I was just really upset. Because I was like, well... I, I want my guitar to play. And it, it just didn't play. And I was really gutted. And um, my friend James was with me when I got this guitar back. And he said, they basically ruined your guitar. And James knew how to set up guitars. He knew about intonation. He knew about string heights and stuff like that. And basically, I said, though, and, and he says, oh, I can, I'll, I'll redo it for you. And I was like, oh, bro, thanks so, thanks so much. Yeah, save my guitar. And as he was doing it, I asked him what he was doing. And he was very, very kindly. Basically, he, he said exactly what I'm relaying to you now, people tube is. Um, he was talking about the grub screws, talking about intonation, talking about the shush rod. And basically, within half an hour, this guitar played like a, a dream, like way better than it than it ever had it was amazing and i was just like right from now on i'm gonna set my guitars off. i'm not leaving it to somebody else to do it i'm not gonna trust it in the hands of somebody else i'm gonna do it myself and uh basically that's 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 where i started and i haven't stopped since and that was probably that would have been 2004 um uh, when i did that i had been i've been playing guitar for maybe where are we two three probably probably just over Three years at that point? No. Can't have been. Two years. Over two years. Doi. I'm great at counting. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I've been playing guitar just over two years at that point. And I was like, right, no one's ever going to set up my guitars but me from now on. And uh, uh, that is a rule I've, just, I've really stuck by. It, and this guitar's amazing. Um, but yeah. That and, that and that was it basically for me. I I, I was like, I'm no one. No one goes near my guitars ever again. That this is this is my territory. And uh, say so since then, I've learned how to fret level. Um, I've learned you know intonation, shush rods, uh, string height action. I know how to uh, solder guitars. I know what I like for pickup heights. Um, and it's got to a point too. People too was like, you know, with guitars now, he's like, where I know if I like the guitar or not, just by touching it. I don't even have to play the guitar. I can just put my hand on it. And guitars have a feel to them. Um, and some guitars you'll just put your hand on and they feel dead. And it's just not your guitar. It ain't for you. Whereas certain other guitars, Mr. Red here, for instance, if I put my hand around it, it's almost like it's, it's like electrically charged. I can feel the whole guitar just by having my hand on the neck. Uh, and it is the neck. I can, I can touch the body in this and the other. That's fine. But it's mainly the neck where I feel the guitar. And I'll know if I like the guitar or not just by putting my hand on the neck. Because, I've, I've, again, I've done, I've played so many guitars and I've, I've set up so many guitars. And like I said, I do it all myself, apart from refrets, which I haven't quite got to yet. Um, it, it, I know what I like and what I don't like. And it's really important, I think, to do that. So, um, so yeah. Mr. Red is back up and running. He's got new strings on him. It's the first time I've restrung my Red Strat since I was in France. The last time I restrung Mr. Red was... Um, I was sat in my friend Nicole Marjo's uh, living room restringing this guitar. Um, and I put nines on him. Uh, at that point in time... Oh, it's so alive again. Let's do it ring. And I can feel the whole guitar it moves. It's amazing. But um, yeah, the last time I restrung this, I was in France in 2020, and this is why I love Diodario strings. Not sponsored by Diodario, just that I love those strings. They last forever, and they just ring. So the guitar is ready to go again. You know, Mr. Red is back up in action. So I'm gonna check that neck. Yeah, perfect. Again, like I say, I'm just looking for the uh, the uh, relief in the neck. Basically, my neck's kind of like they all go up like that. They're not bananaed. They're not like they don't look like this. They just look like that. You know, regardless of what the fisheye lens uh, looks like, I, I don't have crazy relief on my neck. It, it, but I do have some. I don't like it when the neck's straight. The guitar just feels clamped in. But 
I'm gonna go and plug this in now. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna play something people YouTube as a little outro. Um, on Mr. Red, you know, this is one of my favorite guitars. I couldn't be without this guitar. I really can't. Um, but the, mess around with your guitar. Mess around with string heights. Mess around with pickup heights. You know, um, mess around with you know the, the trust rod. Very, just be very careful. Go slowly. Don't rush anything. The slower you go, the faster you learn. It really is. And again, there isn't one setup that does it for everybody. There are setups that kind of get there, but you'll need to find what you want and go with that. And also learning to do it yourself is really important because that way you just, whenever your guitar starts to feel weird, you you can fix it in a microsecond. You don't have to take it to somebody, wait two weeks or whatever to get it back. You know, you don't want to do that. You can fix it then and there and you've got it. Uh, and it's just really important, I think, you know, uh, restringing, intonation, truss rods, pickup heights, wiring, soldering. I mean, I'm, I'm terrible at soldering, but I can get by. Uh, you know, uh, fret leveling, you know, doing uh, nuts and stuff like that. Uh, it's really important. You know, it really is important. So, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this vid uh, on, you know, just setups. I mean, I, I don't, I, I hope, as usual, the fear is here. And I, I just feel like I've just, wasted your time as usual which i'm which i'm great at demonizing myself with that kind of thing too. i'm really good at kind of putting myself down but um but i hope there's been something in this video that you can kind of take away hopefully you kind of saw what i did there all i did was alter the grip screws and the guitar was away again you know i, I don't really need to, i don't need to touch pickups i haven't messed with them um although no i'd be fine um yeah i mean like i say i my eyes know what's right i can see when things are wrong and i can feel when things are wrong and through that experience of doing it for so many years you can't go wrong you know you know when something's not right and you know how to fix it so like when when at the beginning of this video when i first played mr red i was like the action feels horrible i was like Ugh. the guitar feels like it's like just like that now it feels like like that i want to sing and we're gonna let it so Hope there's something in this video, people with YouTube. Hope it's, hope it's kind of like been somewhat informative. As usual, I might say, my brain's telling me it's not informative at all, Dave, and you're an idiot. And you should just uh, you know, run into a wall very fast and smash your face in. But um, that's my brain. It's always going for me. Anyway, uh, but yeah, hope there's something in this video. I will do another video, uh, hopefully soon-ish, uh, talking in about intonation in depth. Uh, in that intonation video, I want to talk about the nut as well. Uh, I haven't really spoke about that in this video because, again, I want to speak about it in that video where I talk about uh, intonation. Um, and I will do a video on the truss rod as well at some point. Um, just, you know, just to kind of like round it off, really. But really, to get get yourself started when you're kind of learning to set up your own guitars, mess with the, the, the saddles on your guitars. Or if it's a Les Paul, mess with the tailpiece. Again, a Les Paul is even easier. It's only two screws. Um, mess with the string height see what feels right to you um, make sure the guitar plays though you don't want it to have it that low that it's just kind of like ping 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 doesn't work also you don't want it too high that it hurts find where you like it find where you like the string height also find where you like your pickups you know low high uh, whatever high not too high always bear that in mind beware the stratitis Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this vid, people tube. I will see you again very soon. And uh, yeah, let's go and plug Mr. Red in and see what comes out. So uh, yeah, uh, if you like the videos I do here, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. It really keeps this channel going. It's the only thing that keeps this channel going at this point in time. Um, yeah, other than that. Oh yeah, and there's a link in the description box as well for my Bandcamp as well, where you can go and listen to my music. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this vid, people tube. I'll see you again very soon for another one. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. Goodbye now. Thank you much indeed for watching. Hope it was informative. I really hope it was informative. <laughs>